G'day mate, welcome back to Factoria with me, Jenny, and we're about to sort of, well, we're about to do a couple of things this episode. One, we're going to play with nukes. Two, we're going to drag this base as far forward as I possibly can before it curls up in a ball and dies. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm I'm going to use as an analogy. Uh, more legs. Yeah, I want more legs. Spidertron, obviously got three legs there for you. Okay, Spidertron has some legs, I have some legs. We're going to do what we can to extend this base as far as we can, like I said. And at the same time, yeah, um, we're going to play with nukes this episode. Because, why not? With all that said, let's run the intro. So, with the intro out of the way, um, first thing I want to do is we have a copper outpost, okay? Uh, actually, no, our copper outpost doesn't do a squat. That copper outpost uh, is running pretty much flat out. Uh, that copper is also going flat out. Um, 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 okay, so we're not doing anything about copper this episode. I'd have to go out and expand out here and grab a new copper outpost. But we are going to play with nukes. And I'm going to do my best to drag this base into, well, the 21st century. Um, so, we're running science. Science is doing as well as it possibly can and we definitely have a copper shortage so this episode i want to go through i want to use productivity modules on everything i possibly can to drag our copper as far forward as i can so we have product mod uh, productivity module ones to two upgrades and at the same time we're going to go with speed module one to speed module two upgrades and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start swiping over our electronic circuits um, main reason is they're a giant user of copper I have no idea how many modules I have. Uh, it looks like that was all of them. Uh, can I have some of those? Put them in there. Uh, can I run you faster? No, I can't. Uh, yeah, I probably could if I put them in there and there and then there. Okay. So, we're going to upgrade this as fast as we can. Try and get as many, pro uh, as much speed and productivity out of these as we can. Next thing I want to do is I want to do... Red science. Um, all productivity. We don't mind if it's a little bit slower because now we're going to be limited by both the speed of which items can come down the bus along with our rocket research, our space science. So I'm going to swap out red science to all productivity modules, which will run a little bit slower. We do know that these run at half crafting speed. So that means we're going to go back down to... I don't know, um, 60 science per minute, I think it is. Um, I don't know, maybe Editor JD can put in the exact amount after the fact. At the same time, we're going to do the exact same with yellow science. Because yellow science... What was I? That's what I was looking for. Yeah, uh, do the exact same with green science. Because green science does use uh, inserters. And of course, inserters use green circuits. And green circuits, of course, come from a copper source. Uh, next up, we're going to go through and we're going to start doing uh, start doing engines to blue science. Again, same story. The blue science itself uses advanced circuits. Advanced circuits cost copper. Same time, we can put... Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Uh same time we're going to put some productivity modules in the engines it's going to cut back on our steel usage uh which we do re remember from a couple of episodes ago is not doing crash hot either where are my prod bonds uh here yeah grab all the prod bonds okay so we're going to do our engine build cut back on our steel usage a little bit okay Technically, it's made the whole build a little bit slower, but also it's made it a little bit more efficient. Uh, military itself. Military, the only thing I can put product, productivity modules in military is in the actual uh, assemblers themselves that make science. So we're going to put some productivity modules in. We're going to speed them up from uh, 0.75 assembly speed up to well, 1.25, and then slow them down to half a, half a, well... An assembly speed of 0.5. So we're going to speed them up to then slow them back down. But at the same time, it's going to use less grenades, which is less iron. It's going to use less walls, which is less stone. We really don't care about. More importantly, it's going to use less uh, less 
Armor piercing ammo, which of course is a cost of both iron and copper. In fact, it's a fairly hefty cost of copper. The steel, not so much, but definitely the copper. At the same time, we are probably don't need to have that much ammo anymore. We're definitely at the point of all lasers now. So I want to tell the bots to pick up all this stuff. And we want to start recycling ammo, which means another thing in there. We put that there. We put a real power pole on that side of the belt. And we're going to bring in all the ammo to right there. How much is in storage? Ah, uh, 5,000. 5,000 rounds. So for the next 5,000 rounds worth of uh, military science, we're not going to be making any yellow ammo. We're just going to be using what we've already got in storage. And that's an awful lot in storage. Yep. Uh, actually, let's pull that out and put that straight in the box. Yeah, it's not as if it's going to go somewhere else. So, we're going to put all that in storage and we're going to use all that ammo to uh, make military science. Next up, we have red circuits. We already promoted them a whole time ago. We have engines to electric engines to um, flying robot frames. So, flying robot frames use electronic circuits. They use engine units, which also use electronic circuits. On top of that, they use batteries, and batteries over wherever they are, right there, also use copper. So we're going to start at this end, and we're going to upgrade those guys. At the same time, I want to start, oh, well, I actually want to start the science end, and upgrade the science end first to all productivity modules. There we go. And then we'll do our flying robot frames. And then we'll do our... Get stuck in a pipe, JD. Come on. There we go. Then we'll do... That finishes that research. Okay, then we'll do our electric engines. Which, again, fill full of productivity modules. Yep. And then we'll do our physical engines themselves. So again, more upgrades more productivity modules i'm gonna run out uh hey base thank you okay in theory i probably should upgrade these two pipe machines but realistically because i've slowed down the machines i probably don't have to upgrade these two the only advantage of upgrading them is less pollution so we might as well do it. Um, I guess you can say the same about military. Oh, I missed this whole extended build of chemical science. Oops. Uh, productivity modules in all of those, all of those, all of those, and all of those. Okay. Uh, continuing down our list of machines. Power hasn't started screaming at us yet. Good. We'll do purple science. Now, at the same time, we're going to do the train tracks. Uh, we'll put productivity module... Oh, I hate these guys. Okay. So these guys are a little bit different. Purple science, because productivity modules are part of the recipe, if I try to click like that, the productivity modules disappear into the machine entirely. So what I want to do is I want a productivity module one of them. Uh, there's got to be an easy way of doing this. Well, there is. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put speed modules in them. That's as far as we got. Uh, I'll put one problem on in there. We're going to go an upgrade planner. We're going to say, what are they? They're speed ones. So we're going to go speed ones. I want the upgrade to prod ones. And then we're going to swipe an upgrade planner over them. And the prod mods disappear and the speed modules come back to me. Excellent. Uh, we can then repeat the process right here. And same story, drag the upgrade planner over them once again and put in productivity modules. Now, this will slow these machines down, which should give us a little bit more steel passing down to get these other machines up and running. Because they're not running and they haven't been running for quite some time. Um, in fact, as we can see, products finishes zero. Uh, products finishes zero. Steel is just not making its way this far down this belt. Is it... Probably that would help. But that means steel's probably not going to make it anywhere else on the bus. Yeah, this is a build that uses a lot of steel. We can productivity module our iron sticks. And we're probably going to 
do it, even though I think this is going to slow down our iron sticks too much, and therefore we can't run our train tracks at full speed. Let's go click on this one. Uh, no, it's still keeping up. Yeah, it's still keeping up. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, we can't uh, put prod mods in them. We can't put prod mods in them. We can upgrade them anyway to cut back on the pollution. It is going to increase the power usage, but that's okay. Uh, same story with these guys. We'll upgrade them. It'll increase the power usage, but decrease the pollution. That leaves speed modules. Sure. And that's about as far as we can make it in the bus. Everything has productivity modules now. We can definitely look at the power over a 10 minute graph and see, um, yeah, things went up a little bit. Um, I could in this, I still have 96 assemblers, 96 tier two assemblers doing something. Uh, where the hell are those? Um, military has some, but not many. You guys upgrade. You guys upgrade. Uh, click on a power pole again. 85. 85 tier 2 assemblers. Uh, that build's all been upgraded. It can't be the workshop, because the workshop's full of tier 1 assemblers. Way more tier 1s than anything else. Oh! Well, this whole build that hasn't been running for a while in saying that like we, we got all the uh, destroyer capsules we needed and hasn't sort of done anything since uh, am I out of I'm out of assembly machines okay down to 79 we're, we're slowly getting there uh, assembly machine one's 37 uh, rocket fuel Rocket fuel. Uh, what else am I missing? Uh, these guys. That's probably all of them. I hope at least. All right. I do want to. I do want to turn off my robots, and we're going to go in here and fill you full of speed ones, and then steal a couple of the machines manually. Uh, because I wouldn't mind upgrading rocket fuel so I know it's done. And the way we're going to do that is put down a couple of them, fill them full of prob mods, rip up the rest of them, and copy these guys across. So we're going to just run along, copy these back in place. And I have no idea where that solid fuel goes. Probably the storage can never be seen again. Robot, 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 right there. Uh, you, how much solid fuel is in storage? Fuel, solid fuel, okie dokie. Uh, 1500. Okay, well, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, that's going to come out of storage and go into that box and then go on that belt and then we should be fine. Uh, so that's upgraded most of the assemblers. Also, sped up the things we can speed up. We're still adding productivity modules here. Uh, and these are all now, as we can see, now they have productivity module twos with a speed beacon with speed module twos. These guys are running at a graphing speed of 1.125 up from the original ones down here at a graphing speed of one. So we've got a little bit more speed out of them along with we've gone from productivity of 16% up to a productivity of 24%. So it's just about like squeezing that extra little bit of resources out of them. Uh, eventually, I think it's when this whole build gets to productivity level threes and speed module threes. From memory, these inserters on the outside need to also swap over to blue. So we've done what we can. We've extended the base where we can. We have also turned off science. I will add that. And now copper is slowly getting towards the end of the bus a little bit little trips and drabs we are getting a couple of solar panels up and made not nearly enough honestly but definitely some so with that done uh, we're going to turn research back on so we did uh robot speed mark one so where are some robots 
basically over here. So robots, you, you probably can't tell. It's a, it's a small speed upgrade, but it is a speed upgrade. Uh, really? I've still got propons on me. Okay, there you go. Uh, we'll dump those into storage. And I'll pick that up. So, research-wise, I think it's about time we start looking at... We can grab more artillery shell range. We could grab more worker robot speed. These are all fairly small upgrades, okay? Mining productivity probably wouldn't hurt us, except it is very expensive. At 2,500 science packs, you'll find that any resources you get, the extra resources you get out of mining productivity cost you a lot more resources up front. Okay, it's it's a very long eventual payoff situation. Uh, so we're going to stick to robot speed, and I normally recommend going up to about the 8,000 mark. Okay, um, as you can see, this one doubles each time, whereas if we go to mining productivity, it goes up by 2.5k each research. So some researchers double, um, other ones, artillery shooting speed also doubles, and then some. Uh, if we go to range, range just plain old doubles. So, yeah, I normally recommend first couple ones, just get your uh, robot speed probably up to about level 9. Level 9 seems to be a good speed. Robots are s snappy then, very, very snappy. Uh, we'll pull that out. What else do I see in here? That. Um, okay, purely to get rid of it. Same story with the copper. Uh, we want to go speed one to speed two. Where are we up to in this upgrade? You've got two, but actually, it doesn't matter if we just start from here and slide down. Uh, that's the next point we're up to, so we're going to upgrade all of those. That was quick. Power wise, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Uh, best bets actually always check the steam engines. They are doing 41 out of 60, so we're definitely going up in our power consumption so this episode nukes i did promise nukes didn't i let's build some nukes because nukes definitely make biter problems go away i'd love to use an assembler three but that's not going to happen i cannot productivity module this build anyway so we need some basics we need some explosives we need some rocket control units and we need some uranium 235 uh we have explosives over here can i access that with an inserter i can over here we're going to make them right here uh, you, we'd like to make some nukes, please. So I would like to have some explosives, rocket control units, and the uranium we're going to bring in via uh, our robots. And we'll put an output on you. And then before I do anything else, we're going to go back to our Covrex process. Because we haven't looked at the Covrex process for a very, very long time. Uh, Covrex process down here. So, remember how I said you're going to put in a big buffer? That way you can forget about it. We've got a giant buffer. And the buffer's doing great. Like, you know, we've filled up the last couple of boxes. We've filled up these boxes. We've filled up these boxes. In fact, actually, let's very quickly get a decent count. Uh, Roboport. Right there. So, the count on Dull Rocks is 43,000 and counting. Okay, we can swap those guys back because we definitely... I have no idea why you guys are trying to pick up dull rocks. Please don't. What are you doing? Oh, I set up a loop. Bad jetty. Bad jetty. Bad, bad jetty. Okay. So, we've been stockpiling shiny rocks down here for a while. As you can see with our priority system, what's actually happening is these guys are outputting onto the belt. And when the belt's full and backed up, we're putting the excess in here. Something, if I actually cared about my uranium... I should have done a very long time ago was to upgrade all these belts to red speed. Uh, in fact, I probably, considering how well these guys are doing, even though actually they've still got speed modules on them, they didn't need speed modules for a very long time. Much better. Okay, one thing I probably should have done is I probably should have upgraded this to our very precious blue belt. Okay, because this system is screaming along, it is doing a wonderful job, and the belt going faster really just affects how many machines you can have in a row. Okay, I am definitely going to have situations where the last guy can't output, especially on yellow belt, because 
everybody else had already output and where he wants to output to was blocked. But on blue belt, we can obviously get a lot more through and now our limiting factor is that inserter. If we upgrade you, we should be doing better. Uh, that should have actually gone in there. Voila, much better. Okay, so this is our Kovrex process. It has accumulated 2.3 thousand shiny rocks. No, I've had some more in my inventory. 2.3 thousand shiny rocks, just a few shiny rocks, okay? And it's gonna keep producing more shiny rocks over and over and over, which now means that we can possibly, roughly, make, how much do we need for a nuke? I think it's 30. So like 900 nukes, give or take. Uh, that one. A nuclear or atomic bomb requires 30. So yeah, just a few nukes. Uh, what are we short on? We're short on prod three still. I'll upgrade you as well. Have I got rid of all those assemblies? 43. Almost. We're getting there. Uh, oh, this whole set. There we go. Upgrade those as well. So, we're going to fill this full of shiny rocks. We're going to make some nukes. Uh, rocket control units are going to come from our science build, which is a fair distance away. On top of that, we also have the rocket silo that's also requesting rocket control units, and it's actually requesting 400. So at this point, I should probably bring the cap on this down to something more reasonable um, rather than having it request 400. But for the moment, what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this request up to 100. Uh, yeah, you're not going to find explosives, hopefully, in the network. And we have 40 flying their way across here. Excellent. Come. Come, my dears. There's our first batch. And the right there is going to be our very first nuke. 50 seconds crafting time. Less than 50 seconds crafting time. Uh, crafting speed of 2.75. So like 20 seconds? 20 seconds is still a long time to wait for a nuclear bomb. You know, so we have things that we need to be doing. We have things that we should be doing. Uh, so we have our very first nuke. Uh, nukes are dangerous. Uh, first off... Nukes are launched from a handheld rocket launcher. You have been warned. They are fired from a handheld weapon. Uh, sorry, I just saw a fish. I saw many fish. Fish equals spidertrons. We want to grab the fishies. Okay. So, nukes come from a handheld weapon. Problem number one. Problem number two, uh, lots of people, we equip a nuclear weapon and then they run out and they go deal with some biters. And then they come back to base and they forget they have a nuclear weapon armed and then accidents do happen. Accidents that sort of look like... Uh, where's a good spot to stand? I think about here. Accidents sort of look like when you're accidentally doing something and you accidentally press spacebar? Spacebar? No? Okay. No, it's outside range. Uh, spacebar? Spacebar. Come on. Spacebar. Spacebar. That's it! There we go. And then problems go away. The problem is you tend to accidentally sp press spacebar when your mouse is much closer to you than what you would expect. And problems like this happen. This is permanent nuclear damage. These tiles, well, this grass is permanently burnt away. It's never going to come back. The ground is always going to be look burnt. Uh, the trees will eventually, or the tree stumps, will eventually decay. But this black smark here is here for good. You have been warned. But nuclear weapons are fun. They definitely make biter problems go away if you can definitely feed the system. We are perfectly fine on the uranium 235. We're definitely short on the rocket control units. Rocket control units, we have three nukes. This is our fourth. How many of those are on the way? 20. How many do we need? 10. Okay, so we've got enough for another couple of nukes. Let's, let's go help the system out by... Um, Hand feeding it a few rocket control units. How's that copper belt now? We've got research up and running. It still dies at low density structures. Okay, rocket control units. They're the ones I said I wanted. Yeah. Uh, same time, we're going to cut that request down to 100. We're going to cut that request down to 100 as well. And we'll cut that one down to 100. Okay. Uh... 
This build over here. This build over here, I wanted to just dump all the rocket control units in and say good luck. At the same time, we will put another assembly machine here, here, here. Uh, power pole, copy, paste. Uh, throw an upgrade planner on that and throw speeds in that. Go faster. You're out of shiny rocks. Uh, 130, please. Yeah, we, we've still got uh, 1,900 in the network. We're not short in any way, shape, or form. All right, time to fast forward for a little bit whilst we wait for some news. All right, so it looks like we're going to have a nuclear party of about 28. 28 seems like an all right number to start with. As you can see, I've got 10 pre-equipped in my launcher and another 18 in my inventory. Uh, first thing, actually, where are we going to go? We're going to go... I want to deal with this because we want this copper patch, unless I can see a better copper patch. There are some good ones out here. More uranium. Uh, no, we're not really hurting on uranium. It's mainly copper. Oh, there's that one and that one. Okay, Spidertron, wherever you are, come here. At the same time, that belt that I forgot to deconstruct. Uh, we might as well bring that all back to base and put it towards something useful. That one, uh, that one. Okay, Spidertron. We go north or we go south? So if I go up here, we could wall that off. We could wall that off super, super easy. Grab this copper. The oil is probably worth it. If we go south, we can definitely wall across there, and I have no idea what's here. Uh, do I see any other choke points? No. So it looks like we're going north. We're going to take our remote. I'm going to click go there. Oh, that's loud. And odd. I've never walked over steam turbines before. Uh, actually, it looks like there's a welcoming party coming in on the left. Or just avoid them just so slightly. And actually, do we want to watch them hit the laser wall? Yeah, let's just watch them for a second. So we're looking for the behemoths. Okay, the behemoth spitter is going to stop out of range. And it's going to start going nuts on the wall. No, but we did notice the behemoth biter came in this way and uh, took a lot longer to die than anybody else. So, hang on, what's in my... Oh, there's no shields. We might have some shields. Okay, so we have a rocket launcher, uh, which is armed with nukes, which is great, because if we can get close enough that we can just drop one of those there, it solves problems. Notice that he lived. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are going to be biters that are going to live to talk about the tales after the fact. They are there to spread, uh, spread the news to their neighbors and make sure that they know to avoid you and to listen when you say it's time to go away guys go away go away go away yeah plenty of plds do a better job than anything else uh that's a behemoth worm it has a, a movement speed of 30 percent, so it's going to make you very very slow just the same as the behemoth behemoth spitters do at the same time he has a range of what 48 uh, quite impressive. What's more impressive is nuclear weapons. Pop! Gone. Uh, we have a little base here. I'm not even going to talk about it. We're just going to... Really? Yep, yeah, we're just going to say goodbye to the neighbors because it's quicker and easier, especially after you have atomic weapons. It also leaves a nice little marker on the ground to say where you've been. That one can go away. And... That one can go away, and that one can go away. Mm, call my ride. I really don't want to fight about it. Oh! Here's my ride. You're late. You're late, dude. 
Uh, what else do we want to go clear? We want to go clear that one. Uh, that one's probably good enough. We could just walk a spider over there. If the spider doesn't get caught on the coast. Yeah, thanks, Spidertron. Okay, you can load, load nukes in a Spidertron. I highly recommend you do not ever load nukes in a Spidertron. Actually, that's all done. Uh, okay, so we've walled off that little well. We've cleaned out that little section. All right, so I want to... <sighs> what do we want to do? We really want to wall it off with lasers. Uh, which means I want that blueprint. Okay, so we're going to go back to base. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get another spider shot out in a hurry. But we have showed off nukes. We have shown uh, their slightly destructive power. Uh, speaking of nukes, uh, we're now up to 91% evolution, so 6% behemoths. That's not a great sign. In here, I'm going to take out that. And I'm actually going to equip this guy for construction. Uh, I want robots. I'm going to jump out. We're going to look inside my armor, give you a personal robo port, which we're going to put in your grid. Uh, at the same time, uh, you need lasers, large power poles. Come, 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 come here. Okay, lasers. Um, large power poles, substations. Uh, you're also going to need walls. Uh, come this way, spider. Over here to our wall assembly. Nah, that'll probably do us. All right. With that said, we can now run our Spidertron out to here. And I don't have any large power poles. I do have logistics off. Awesome. Okay, logistics are back on now. We can extend our power network out. Where I want to build a wall? About there. Uh, actually, Spidey, can you come back here, please? Yeah, I forgot cliff explosives. You'll probably need some cliff explosives. At the same time, I'm going to give you some more lasers, some more substations, and some more goodies. Okay, right, Spidey, Spidey, Spidey. Uh, you can have two lots of cliff explosives. No, nope, two lots of cliff explosives. Yeah, you can have some repair packs. We're going to give you, what was it? Um, lasers and substations. Yeah, I think that's everything. And some more lasers, it turns out. Okay, Spidertron does what a Spidertron can. We're going to have them run out here. And we're going to actually have the Spidertron walk outside the uh, robot range. And we're going to get the Spidertron to build a wall for us. We do need a wall to build with, which is from there to there, I think. Oh, do we still have that one copied? Oh, we do. Excellent. Okay. Come on, Spidertron. What are you doing? You're stuck on... Yeah, you're stuck on the edge. You silly monkey. Alright. We're going to have Spidertron out here. Stop. I think I didn't tick a tick box. Come on, Spidertron. You're ruining this for me. Enable the logistics whilst moving. Yes. Trunk. Oh, robots! That makes it all better. Uh, uh, do I have robots in request? Nope. Uh, a, high, a lower 50 and a higher 50, please. I only want 50 robots. Uh, okay. Now, second time's a charm. Stop. Build. Uh, what do we want? We want the wall from 
here down. So about here somewhere. Actually, we're going to start at this end. And because the rover for the spider trunk can see what it's doing, we're going to have it just drag everything out and then put a power pole there. No, nope, come on. Power pole there. And I think you need another substation there with some extra lasers at the edge. Yup. And now Spidertron can slowly walk, work his way up and down the wall and can slowly build out the wall for us. Yeah, that's that part done. Move up a little bit. That's that part done. Up a little bit further. Down a tiny bit. Yeah, that's that part done. And we can have him even automate our defenses. Also means that when attacks happen and the wall does take damage, as long as we pay attention to it, we can even now send our Spidertron out to remotely repair our walls. Um, so with a fleet of Spidertrons, a couple of Spidertron remotes, you could happily stand in base and never have to move again and just send the Spidertrons out to do your bidding, repair your walls, fix anything damaged, and you should be good to go. Uh, we're going to put a laser there, a laser there, and a laser there. Uh, I need to run you, I guess, to here? What's the quickest way to get power out there? Across there? No, probably across here. Alright, so large power pole there, uh, there, there, there there spider tron to here please all right actually over here because he's gonna have to build these ones that aren't in range of the rest of the base done uh power pole there power pole there power pole there power pole there come on spidey forward a bit Stop there and there and that one and uh, under your leg. Uh, where's the remote? There it is. That one. That one. That one. Is that? That's pretty much the choke point, right? Yeah. And then grab our wall and same story as before. We're just going to paste it there and work our way across. Uh, obviously, it would help if a Spidertron moved this way. Uh, yep, that's the wall done. Okay, uh, come back to step whoop, step one and finish building this before you work off and do the rest. Yeah, poor robots that ran out of power. It's fine. Uh, this is hooked into the main grid. This does need an extra couple of lasers at the edge. But as you can see, very, very quickly, very, very easily, we went off, we nuked the friends, we built this wall, which needs radars. I forgot radars. I forgot radars. I forgot radars. So it needs radars. It needs a spider trying to come help out and stand defense just whilst it gets everything built. He is pre-equipped with rockets, so if we do have any surprise attacks, he would definitely completely deal with them. Um, and at the same time, he can actually construct our walls for us. Uh, I'm a little bit loath to send him out to do a whole outpost. I've never tried. In theory, it would work without a problem. Um, you could literally park, park them in the middle of the patch and just blueprint down a whole mining outpost. Just copy and paste an existing one, dump it down, down there and let the spider trunk go ham at it. Um, I've never tried. I've never tried. Uh, but yeah, different thoughts for your particular playthrough in the future. You can either have a Spidertron army of mass destruction or a calm Spidertron army that's equipped with roboports that will self-build the base for you, meaning that you never actually have to get out of your comfy little power armor. You can go curl up beside a nuclear reactor and stay nice and toasty and warm and live out the rest of the winter Um Waiting for the spider trunks to build a base for you. With all that said, I think this is where we're going to leave this episode. Uh, next episode, we will finally finish off. I think the only thing left to finish off is actual an actual solar power grid. Because I want to get that done. Do we have enough solar? Two. I'm going to go with no. 
Why right, steel now? Yep, the base is suffering. Um, so next episode, uh, you are actually steel. Steel can go up to red belt because technically we are producing more than a yellow belt's worth of steel. Uh, yeah, I see we're going to upgrade stuff to blue belt. It really doesn't matter. So we're just going to upgrade all of that. Uh, where are we, Spidertron? Can we just do the last little corner, please? That way I'm defended between episodes. That'd be really handy. Thank you, Mr. Spider. Uh, substation in there, please. We'll throw a few, a few more lasers down here in the corner. And we're now defended at both ends. So, Spidertron can come back to base and pick up a couple of radars. Um, so, next episode. Uh, maybe solar panels. Um, I might have to leave the game running for a little bit to have enough solar panels. It also looks like somehow we've managed to run out of batteries as well. Oh, it's an acid problem. Awesome. Why are we out of acid? Because we literally can't process it fast enough. Well, that's something we can definitely uh, tweak. Uh, speed beacons are the answer. Always the answer. Uh, that'll help. Okay, so uh, next episode... Did you get stuck already? Spider-tron! You were just there to go grab the fish, right? Okay. Now come home. Thanks. All right, so next episode, um, we will probably do something about solar. At the same time, we're probably going to cover a copper injection because I do have this copper patch here. So we'll build in some sort of train station to inject more copper into the bus. Um, so that and solar. And then I think we're done. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover with this series. Um, it has been a wonderful series. I do need to thank you guys so much for watching. And we will see you guys in the next episode. But with all that said, this is where I'm going to leave it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode. Both me and Mr. Spidertron. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.